Hi guys, welcome back. We are working our way through the rainforest today. We're actually not gonna be learning about an animal. We're gonna be learning about the people that live in the rainforest. Did you know there are people that live in the rainforest? Yeah, there's tribes of different people. Uh, so, in your packet, we have this mask that looks like this, you'll need. And there's no writing that goes along with this one. So, it's just a reading story. We're gonna read through this story called The Umbrella by Jan Brett. We love Jan Brett, don't we? Yeah. And I have a nonfiction book that gives a little bit of information about the people that live in the rainforest. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I wanna start off with this book of facts. And I used it before, because here's that anaconda that we were looking at, do you remember? But I wanna focus on the people that live there. It says, many native peoples of the rainforest still follow the way of life that has remained unchanged for centuries. It means that they kind of have been living the same way. Like they don't have Walmart and they don't have modern things like cars and stuff like that. They kind of live off the land, kind of like our Native Americans here in the United States. It says, some travel through the forest making temporary camps. Others live in established villages and grow crops. Um, so crops are like they're farming, okay? They raise their stuff like uh, their vegetables and stuff. Native peoples depend on the forest to survive. They hunt for animals among the trees or catch fish or turtles in the river and even snakes, right? Yeah, let's see what they are doing with that snake. It says snake hunters. Hmm, remember when we learned about the anaconda? It said that the biggest predator for the anaconda was what? Humans, that's us, right? Yeah, the humans. It says the anaconda the Amaz of the Amazon rarely attacks humans. So they're not out to, you know, kill the humans. All the same, it is hunted by the Indians who live there. They use their blowpipe darts or rifles to kill it. Several men are needed to carry the body of the snake back to the village. A large anaconda weighs more than a cow. We learned about that too. All right, so it's humans, these tribes of people that might kill an Amazon um, anaconda. All right, and they use those blow darts. I don't know if this is a picture of one. This looks like a bow and arrow, kind of like our Native Americans. He has his bow and his arrow. They don't have a picture of that blow dart that I showed you. It says many Amazon Indians still use bows and arrows and blow pipes and darts to hunt or fish. The arrowheads are carved from uh, twigs, bones, and scraps of metal. All right, now I want you to take a look at his face makeup. And he has some kind of um, piercing or something. Yeah, they look a little different than we do, huh? But they have ways of painting their face that we're gonna talk about in a little while when we make our mask. All right, so I have this story. It's a Jan Brett story, it's so cute. But there's a little boy in the story named Carlos who is actually lives at the edge of a rainforest. That's why I picked this book. But if you remember the story of the mitten, with all the animals try to get inside the mitten. This is gonna remind you so much of that story, okay? This is called the umbrella. All right, it has beautiful pictures. You know what, that's something that you can do while you're home. Go to janbrett.com. Remember at Christmas time we went on there and they had um, so many activities for you to try? She probably has something about the umbrella on there too. But look at her beautiful drawings. Yeah, she does the words and the pictures. Oh, did you see the jaguar hiding in the trees? There you go. The umbrella. Hey, Carlos. Little Carlos, where are you going with that umbrella? Into the cloud forest, Papa, to see what I can see. I'll be spotting a jaguar and a monkey, and for sure I will spy a toucan and a kinkajou. I will keep my eyes peeled for that shy taper. Buenos suerte. Carlos, good luck, Papa says. So he has his little umbrella, right? And he's heading into the cloud forest, is what he calls it. And he's looking for some of those animals. Carlos walks into the cloud forest. Oh, how silent it is. The only sound is drip, drip, drip of the drops falling from the tall trees. There's not so much as a tiny little tree frog down here. 
Carlos thinks, anyway. I'll have to climb up to the top for a better view. So Carlos drops his umbrella and starts up the giant fig tree. And if you look on this tree, look, you can see those bromeliads we talked about. See those plants that grow on the side of the trees? And Jan Brett, you know how she always gives us a little hint about who's next, who's next? Yeah, the red-eyed tree frog. Now he thinks nobody's there because when he came, all the animals hid from him, right? And look at this little red-eyed tree frog inside the bromeliad. Cute. Drip, drip, drip. A little puddle appears in the green umbrella. A tiny tree frog leaps down and slips into the water. Hola, froggy croaks very happily. I have seen, have I have this puddle all to myself. He sinks down until his eyes just peep out. So he's very excited. He's like, oh yeah, I got this whole thing to myself. But look who's coming. Yep, toucan. Pop! A juicy ripe fig falls smack into the umbrella. Toucan is not far behind. Froggy sees toucan's sharp beak. Beep, 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 he peeps. Go away! But the toucan is not moving. He's waiting for another fig to fall. So the um, red-eyed tree frog has to share with the toucan inside that umbrella, kind of like in the mitten story. And then there's somebody else coming. You might not know this animal. Do you know what a kinkajou is? This is a kinkajou. He is kind of right there. He's a mammal. You might not know him. High in the tree, a scratching sound starts. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Something is sliding down the tree. It gets louder and louder and then thump! A kinkajou tumbles in. Muy grande. That means very big. You're too big. You can't stay here, Toucan says. But the kinkajou is just getting comfortable. After prowling around all night for food, he's found just the right place to rest. So he's nocturnal, so he was hunting all night. And now he wants to be in there all comfortable. Oh, the taper is coming, look. All right. Thump, thump, crash, thump. A baby taper blunders into the umbrella. Blah, 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 he says. Mama, mama, no esta aquí. She's not here, Froggy shouts, along with the hungry toucan and the sleepy kinkajou. The umbrella's shiny green leaves shiver and shake. But Baby Taper is staying right here until his mother comes for him. He's my favorite. There we go. You can see who's coming. Swish, swish, swish. A most beautiful bird sails down into the um, to the umbrella handle. A quitzel, which is this kind of bird right here. Can you see that? Yeah, the quitzel comes down and looks down at Froggy. Toucan, Kinkajou, and Baby Taper rocking back and forth. Fly away, they all call. But the proud Quitzel is too busy arranging his tail plumes to listen to them. He doesn't even care. And now you can see the monkey coming. Now the monkey is kind of the silly one of the story. Suddenly, a frisky little monkey jumps down and he grabs the umbrella and he flings it into the river and jumps aboard. Que pasa? What's happening? Froggy asked. And the water starts to pour into the umbrella. We will definitely sink for sure. Toucan, Kinkajou, Baby Taper, and Quitzel are all wailing together. That monkey never thinks of anything before he acts. Attention, attention. Who's sitting on me? Froggy cries. Stop poking your beak into me, Kinkajou shouts. Blah, 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 says the Baby Taper. You're getting my feathers all wet, the Quitzel squawks. Jaguar is cleaning his silky black spots when he hears all this squabbling and looks up. <gasps> Uh-oh, the jaguar is just listening to all of this. Do jaguars eat all those animals? Mm-hmm, could be his lunch, huh? As the umbrella floats by, he pounces in, making it sink even deeper into the water. The animals scramble and squirm out of the jaguar's way. No problemo, frog froggy squeals as the jaguars right in the jaguar's ear. Be our guest, the animals cry. Just please, please don't eat us up. What they think is what they're thinking to themselves. Yeah, they don't want to be eaten, do they? 
boy, now look who's coming. A little tiny hummingbird. Hmm. The hummingbird flashes by, smaller than small. He sees the big green umbrella handle sticking up, just the place for a hummingbird to stop for a little rest. As he's about to land, they all start shouting, No room, says the jaguar. Jaguar. Move on, says the monkey. Find another place, says the quitzel. We got it here first, said the kinkajou. Stay away, says the toucan, and it screeches. Blah, 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 says the baby taper. Adios, goodbye, froggy peeps. But the hummingbird lands there anyway. <gasps> Ready? Curr, splash, into the water. The umbrella tumbles over and everyone falls out. Jaguar, Quetzal, Baby Taper, Kinkajou, Toucan, Monkey, Frog, they all clamber to the bank as the umbrella pops to the surface and drifts back to the shore. There we go. All right, so they made it back to land. Up in the giant fig tree, Carlos looks out at the sea of green. Aw, no animals today, he sighs. I wonder where everyone is. Where are they all? He climbs down, he picks up his umbrella, and walks toward home. So Carlos, he's been busy up in the tree. He doesn't see any of these animals. The sun shines through the green leaves of the umbrella, and Carlos sees the silhouette of a tiny tree frog. Hey, little froggy, trying to hitchhike home with me? I'll show you a real adventure. I'm going back to the cloud forest to find a toucan or maybe a, t a kinkajou or maybe even a monkey or a shy taper. I bet I'll even see a jaguar too. And I'm going to find a quetzal for sure. Carlos props the umbrella outside his door. Drip, drip, drip. Water falls from the roof and a little puddle appears in the green umbrella. Froggy slides down the handle and slips into the water. Hola, Froggy splashes happily. I have this puddle all to myself. Uh-oh, so he thinks he's alone again. All right, does this remind you of the mitten? It really does. Remember all the animals tried to squeeze inside the mitten? And then at the end, the little tiny mouse makes the bear sneeze. Heck, choo and they all go flying. Yeah, the little hummingbird lands on the handle of the umbrella and then splash, all the animals go flying. So it's very similar, isn't it? Yeah, we like Jan Brett though. All right, so we saw Carlos, who didn't have any of that face makeup on. And we saw some others that were hunting that did have the makeup on. So we're gonna do more of like the hunting um, type faces. So here's a person of the rainforest. It's uh, it says, the forest people in New Guinea paint their faces for special occasions. And at the bottom, look, they give you some ideas of how they might paint their face for special occasions. Okay? So I want you to pick a way to paint the face, to decorate it. Then you can cut it out. Now, some kids like to cut the eyes out and make like a real mask. Or some gr kids or girls, they like to just put the eyeball in there. It's up to you. It's, it's yours to keep. And then you can kind of glue it in your rainforest too and have a person kind of peeking out of the rainforest. Okay? All right. I hope you learned something here today and that there are people along with animals in the rainforest. All right. Keep learning.